it's not kind of separated. It is different. Okay. Like it is, it, they are not the same. Good morning. Happy Friday. I have the extra large neuro coffee in hand and it is perfect. Had to go extra large today. I'm, I, I'm actually about ready to talk to Dr. Mike Russell, the creator of Neuro Coffee. Got to be ready. Got to make sure I get enough dose of the BDNF in me for that call. It's going to be a fun one. Uh, digging in today's Q and A. Um, this is with Ivan. Ivan asks a great question. Ivan's great because he comes in and he ties things in with the foundational elements of the model. And so uh, we talked about how the pelvis behaves a little bit. And then we got into the connective tissue behavior versus muscle behavior. So this is concentric to eccentric orientation versus um, the overcoming and yielding actions of the connective tissue. They are not the same and they are separate. And I know it's a point of confusion for a lot of people because we've never really looked at connective tissues to this extent. Connective tissue behavior is where the money is. And if we can get it to behave correctly, um, we can apply the, the Austin Ulrich principle of connective tissue tuning effectively. Um, we are much more successful when we can understand these things. So this will be a great question for a lot of people. If you'd like to participate in a 15 minute consultation, please go to askbillhartman at gmail.com, askbillhartman at gmail.com, and put 15 minute consultation in the subject line so we don't delete it. We'll arrange that at our mutual convenience. Don't forget, go to the YouTube channel if you have foundational questions. All of the videos eventually end up up there. So please go there, subscribe, and we will have an outstanding weekend. If you're in the two week sprint, this is the recovery weekend. So a lot of reflection going on this weekend. You guys do the same. Have a great weekend. I'll see you next week. Uh so this relates to my first question. Okay. And I just wanted to ask, so if the Nero is falling forward and he has an inhaled skeleton um, and you were looking from top down and you drew like, a, let's say a frontal plane line through the body. And then you looked at the thoracic outlet and- a What? Just like a line to have the body in the- Okay, I like that better. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> okay. I'm, I'm sorry about that. I'm just messing. I'm just messing. I understand. <laughs> okay. Um, so, would you say that the, the the because the posterior side is is like a parachute, basically? On an arrow. Yeah. Would you say that the I'm I'm confused. Oh, I understand. What you're, no, I, I you're you're making a reference to something that I said a long time ago. I got it. I'm with you. Okay. So now I'm confused because I know that that um, the narrow has a, an, an, let's say, a pelvic outlet that's eccentrically oriented. But right. I guess my mistake is because I was thinking the same way as Ian. And if you do that line, like to have the pelvis into anterior and posterior, both sides of, of that line are eccentric. Am I right here or wrong? It depends on it depends on where you're looking in re, in regards to that description. <clears throat> so if I if I uh, counter new tech, okay, right, that's going to go in that direction right there, correct? Okay, concentric yeah. concentric orientation here, okay? Yeah. Okay. Eccentric orientation here. Okay. Okay. But expand. Hang on, hang on. Sorry, it's okay. Expansion there. Okay. Okay. So the expansion is is. So if you think about like the, if this would be representative of like an ISA, this would be moving forward in that direction, right? Yeah. So that's why it's that's why it goes forward. So I got like a little scoop there. And I got expansion that way. Okay. Yeah. Push this in. This gets pushed forward. Okay. But the part where you're holding the sacrum. Yes. How would you call that? Because the center mutation? Yeah, but would you say that posterior pelvic outlet? Is that a correct term? See where my fingers are? Yeah. Posterior outlet. Okay. See the space? Anterior yeah. outlet. Okay. Posterior outlet, anterior outlet. See okay. It? 
Okay, so the posterior concentric, anterior eccentric. So then when you look at the diaphragm as well, it's the same in the thorax or not the same? Uh, so they're using a compensatory exhalation, so it is eccentrically oriented. Okay, but could you say that the anterior part of the diaphragm is then more uh, descended or ascended? It, it, okay, so again, you, you, you have to understand you're using a concentric representation, right? Or I'm sorry, eccentric representation yeah. in, in the thoracic diaphragm. Yeah. Posteriorly. Okay, um, eccentric overcoming. Okay, anteriorly mm -hmm. eccentric yielding. yielding. Okay. Yeah. Get it? Yeah. Okay. So then I would like to touch on the connective tissue behavior just a bit. Okay, we um, just did. Okay, a bit more. <laughs> 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 so. The thing that's kind of confusing me, and this is, I know this is a broad question, but I'm having a, a tough time differentiating connective tissue behavior and muscle orientation. Like I'm always trying to, trying to pair these two, and I know that they can be kind of separated, if that makes sense. It's not kind of separated. It is different. Okay. Like it is, they are not the same. They're not the same. Exactly. Yeah. Um, so connective tissue provides a rate dependent behavior. That's the easiest way to see it. Okay. When you're moving quickly, like really high velocity, throwing a ball, kicking a ball, sprinting. Okay. Muscles can't change shape fast enough for you to move that quickly. However, I can store and release a lot of energy in connective tissues, and that moves a heck of a lot faster than any muscle can, okay? Uh, muscles have gotten too much credit for what we do when it's actually connective tissue behaviors that produce a lot of this. So it's like, <clears throat> if you look at EMG, Grace, EMG, EMG, they, they get wild and crazy about EMG, about what muscles do. And, and they say that, oh, such and such a muscle is quiet when you're doing some sort of activity. But yet, yet the connective tissue that's associated with that is moving. Because it has to, because that's how we, that's how we do stuff, right? Um, and then obviously different recruitment of motor units. So you have rate coding and you have synchronization and you have intramuscular coordination and, and intermuscular coordination and all those things that are factors in how the muscles behave, but they're driving, they're driving the tuning, Austin Ulrich, full credit. Um, they're driving the tuning of the connective tissues to get the connective tissues to move either quickly or more stiffly, depending on the activity in question. Okay. When a joint changes its position, when a joint changes its position, the muscles have to change their orientation. Okay. Because if I have a concentrically oriented muscle, there's no pressure. I can't change the pressure in that area. Therefore there would be no movement. Okay. Does that make sense? Yeah. So we're, yeah. so we're back to Jordan's, we're back to Jordan's question about trying to get dorsiflexion on this kid. It's like, okay, you can yank and pull on that, on that ankle all day long. That muscle that he's trying to influence does not want to change shape for a reason. And it's going to go, nope, not changing. Yank and pull all day long. It'll never change. Okay. Cause it, so, so again, I can't change the expansion in that, in that area. That's muscle behavior. Yeah. It also influences how much tension there would be in the connective tissues under that circumstance. So from a rate standpoint, um, that muscle is on right away, high rate, stiff tissues too, okay? All right? If, if that kid was doing a box jump, he jumps off the box, he lands on the ground, muscle still concentrically oriented, but because there's more time to load the connective tissues, those connective tissues will elongate. Yield. That's a yield. So that's a change in the 
the actual storage and release of energy in the connective tissues, which is a length change in the connective tissues. But the, the, but the muscle orientation is exactly the same. It's, but it's still concentrically oriented under that circumstance. Because if it eccentrically oriented, my ankle would move more and I would reduce the tension on the connective tissues. I would distribute that force and I would dampen and it would lay in softly. Do you see the difference in the behavior of the muscle versus the connective tissues? Yeah. Yeah. Do so, you, uh, maybe... so, so t- so connect, sorry, connective tissues are, are, are rate producers, right? By their stiffness or their, their yielding capabilities, right? So the overcoming is a stiffer representation and the yielding is the, is the, uh, the giving way, the storage in, of energy. Okay. Awesome. Awesome. And this Do is happening maybe... all the time. Okay. All the time. 